Assalamualaikum dear students welcome back to learn daily physics okay so previously we were talking about that how we have confined that uh, we have confined this how this charge confines inside of this bottle i told you that we will drive a relation for this so now it's the time to drive relation for that so let's move on to word of relation so we see that del of b for our case in magnetic mirror this del of b equals to 0 okay del dot b is equals to 0 which means that this divergence is equals to 0 okay it diverges then converges and for our magnetic mirror we have a case that this del dot b equals to 0 this is del dot b is in cartesian coordinate we can write it partial by partial r or partial by partial x partial by partial z but now we have to write this in polar spherical coordinates so in polar spherical coordinates we can write this del dot p is in this form you can see okay uh, as we've said that we have a symmetry with respect to b of theta this vector b of theta equals to zero so this value goes to zero and when this value goes to zero we have this equation integrating putting an integration sign on both sides we will have this and taking this partial r on this side here taking this outside the integration and we will have an equation like this this will be a total partial you can say this is like an del and operating del with this integration this this is r of b r because this is the b r which i've told you that this is the variation with respect to b of r we have an r we have a theta and we have a z this is b of z along z axis b of r the radial component and b of theta in its component with respect to angle theta so b of theta is uh, we have a constraint that b of theta is equals to zero we have a symmetry with respect to theta okay now we have seen that this r is cancelled out with this r square by integrating this r and b of r is equals to this value okay this b of r is equals to this value minus partial b of c our partial z this is the relation between p of r and b of z uh, in the very next derivation we are going to put this value okay so remember this value okay now we can see that we can see by Lorentz force f is equals to q into e plus v cross b we are not taking e is equals to zero so q will be equals for the magnetic force this is the formula for the magnetic force f is equals to q v cross b okay now cal for the v cross b we know that this is a cross product and we can write a cross product in the form of determinant this time here we are not having i j and k why we are not having i j and k because we already discussed that this is polar spherical coordinates and i told you that in polar spherical coordinates we have r theta and c so finding out this r component first we will take v theta into v of c minus b theta into v of z okay v theta into v of c minus b theta into v of z it will be v theta into v of z minus v z of v of theta so here i wrote this and uh, this is not v theta v of z here v theta v of z okay for the f of theta i've uh, short some step okay so i short someone so you have to write this and this then you have to uh, split them in f of r plus f of r r component plus f of like this let me show you uh, you will split f of r 
with f of r r component plus f of theta with theta component plus f of z with z component and uh, write uh, this component with r t r component theta component and z component then you are going to compare as we uh, we compare for i j k simply just like uh, instead of i j k we are using r t tan phi let's say this is f of i this is f of x f of y f of z uh, so we have f of r f of theta and f of z so simply we compare them and we get equation f of r this f of theta this and f of z this now putting the value of b of r uh, from equation one let's say from equation one we have put in the value of b of r here and it will be f of z minus q v of theta minus this equation and after rearranging this equation we can write this equation like this okay so this was the f of z okay our second step is done now first step was in the first lecture and now the second step is done now in our second lecture so let's move on and let's see that let's say that this v of theta consider a particle whose guiding center lies on the axis depending upon the sign v of theta is equals to minus plus v perpendicular here we, we should have write v perpendicular okay so it was v perpendicular so now what i have said is let's elaborate that uh, plasma shows diamagnetic behavior i've told you earlier and uh, this is that why plasma shows diamagnetic behavior because when we have seen the gyration i've told you that if it is moving in this direction okay so according to right hand rule okay it will oppose its cause okay when we when when we apply the flamin rule okay flamin right hand rule so the direction if it's moving like this okay so it's direction will be opposite okay for the positive charge the direction will be shown with the negative one and for the negative charge it will be like this and it will the direction will be positive okay so v of theta will be minus plus v of perpendicular it means that it shows a diamagnetic behavior a diamagnetic behavior is that the applied magnetic field is cancelled partially cancelled by the induced magnetic field b of z is cancelled out by the b of induced partially cancelled not totally cancelled out but partially cancelled out from this b of b induced okay so now as for positive charge this is for the positive charge this is for the positive charge the direction is negative and for the negative charge the direction is positive so from that we can write that v of theta is minus for the positive charge because the direction is negative and positive for negative charge this one we we already know that when we write omega c we write plus minus omega c which means that positive for positive charge and negative for negative charge but here it is negative for positive charge and positive for negative charge so it's a quite positive negative positive negative thing but you understand i tried my best so now you've un understood that how this v of theta is equals to minus plus v of perpendicular putting that value in our equation given equation which we have derived earlier here v of theta will be equals to plus minus v perpendicular so putting that value then we will put that uh, v is equals to v perpendicular is equals to r perpendicular over omega c and r perpendicular will be equals to v perpendicular over omega c okay so putting that value v perpendicular over omega c instead of r here it will be the r perpendicular or r 
so it will be the v perpendicular square this is v perpendicular into v perpendicular it will be the v perpendicular square and uh, putting opening the value of omega c omega c is equals to q b over m okay q b over m putting this value here the equation will be like this and omega is plus minus omega q b over m okay this plus will be make this plus minus make minus and this minus plus will also make minus so we are only writing a minus sign here because minus plus minus plus minus minus and rearranging this equation we will have an equation like this equation like this okay this minus plus minus and this plus minus minus now this value here is magnetic moment of a gyration particle we have derived out a, a one the question you will the, the question in the exam will be asked that drive what is magnetic mirror drive a relation for magnetic moment of gyration particle and show us that how this magnetic moment of a gyration particle is constant and how a particle is confined inside of a magnetic mirror this will be the question asked okay so one topic and a lot of questions so that's why this is an, an important topic okay so how this is how this mu is equals to half of mv perpendicular square now we we will prove that from the definition of uh, magnetic moment that uh, it really equals to this value why we are asking we are why we are naming this magnetic moment how this value is equals to magnetic moment in plasma so in our next lecture we are going to find out this value this uh, is a quite this topic is quite lengthy and uh, this you have to understand okay so without understanding this topic without understanding the terminologies used in topic you cannot move further so thank you very much for your time and in the next lecture we are going to find out that what uh, why we've called this as the magnetic movement of a gyration particle so because when we will understand this mu then we will understand that how a charge traps inside of the how a charge can be confined inside of the magnetic bottle so thank you very much for your time assalamu alaikum